Hello, welcome back, my Royal Rogues. My name is Jesus Enrique Rosas. I'm the Royal Rogue. We are ready for another session of Royals and non-Royals. And it started with this image that I published on my Twitter account. Well, it's very representative of Harry's state of mind. You know, his battle language is on point. You might be asking, where did I get these pictures that I'm fiddling with? AI, artificial intelligence generated images, and this is one of them. It's uh, quite impressive what, uh, this is Mid Journey, the, the AI that uh, gets these images, and it's impressive what this, uh, this, this software can do. The results were truly amazing, and there's one caption. Thanks, Rock Lobster. Mommy took us to the fun fair. William was allowed to go on the dodgems. But I was not. Yeah, you can imagine that uh, that is almost taken straight from Spears' pages. But it was not only Harry what that was making some kind of experiments to create this uh, this uh, totally made up images. It's like this one of Megan. I, I think the result is quite nice, and I would call this uh, Megan every time the Daily Mail is not talking about her. Like, she has this this uh, attitude of sadness. But I wanted to show you two, regarding memes, this uh, Venezuelan comedian, one of my favorite Venezuelan comedians, uh, George Harris, talking about the royal family, the royal family and the royal soap opera. Más que no fue la Megan, la soporto. No la soporto. Porque después que vino a hablar huevonas aquí, con Oprah, ahora hay que ningún te seque las lágrimas. No te lo vamos a permitir. Después que viniste a hablar, no, que la vieja es esa. Está bien estiradota, es racista. Mira, mira, mira. La abuela no le hables de esa manera. Tú no tienes ni idea de lo que ha hecho esa señora. Esa señora le ha caído bomba en la cabeza. Tú en tu puta vida no tenías ni atracado a ti un chacaito, un momento, una corredera, en un autobús, una salsa erótica, ni te han atracado. O sea, porque, la, porque todo el mundo juzga a la, a la abuela, la juzga, y esa vieja coño mal. Pero vamos a ver, cuando uno ve la historia de esa gente, porque uno cree que esa gente está todo el día en un merengue. Fernanda, Fernanda, me quiero ir contigo y la vieja te parranda. Yeah, you can see that George shares our global sentiment. But you don't have to be a comedian to make people laugh. And one of the, one of the clips that I want to show you Today's main clip is Gail King asking Oprah, what does she think about the coronation, Harry and Meghan, the invitation? Should they go? Sh shouldn't they go? What is this all about? Let's look at that clip and I'm going to tell you everything about her body language right next. You know, it's been reported that Harry and Meghan have received an invitation to the coronation. Do you think they should go? Do you think they should not go? Is it something you'd like to comment on? I'm listening. I think they should do what they feel is best for them and for their family. That's what I think. That's what the bottom line, it comes down to what do you feel like is the right thing for you? Okay. Yeah, they haven't asked me. They have my asked opinion. Yeah. No, they have not. Now, I find very funny that Gail at the start, she almost, she almost does that Megan curtsy. Oh, there she goes. Uh, She, she, she's even cursing. Maybe it was subconscious. Maybe it was unintentional. But it, it, it really reminded me of that uh, Netflix horror mentory curtsy. So she's asking Oprah. And this is obviously staged in the sense that they talk about this before the show, I'm sure. They ask me, what do I think about this so I can set the record straight? And you might remember that Oprah is not that happy. Uh, with the Hartles. And we see a couple signals here. Very easy to spot. First, I'm going to go back and forth with uh, the scrubber and take a look at her shoulders. Her shoulders give you a nice shot of her breathing. I've said many times how it's important. How important it is to take a look, to be able to spot people's breathing And you can see that, well, she is breathing deeply. So there is one emotional reaction. We don't know exactly yet. There's also that thing she does with her lips. Uh, her face is, uh, well, it's a bit more than serious. Maybe she is upset. Maybe she uh, knew the question was coming. 
her fingers are quite tense for the uh, for, for the question. So I, I the general battle language of Oprah, just by looking at the first two seconds, is of tension. Right? It's like she is not relaxed. She her, her neck is absolutely straight. Okay, her head is looking at Gail, but her neck is straight. So in every way, I see this uh, tension. Are we going to talk about the uh, the Harkles question? I have to answer. Well, let's let's go. So she goes. I think they should do what they feel is best for them and for their family. And she does this gesture with her hands, with her palms up, like I have nothing to do with this. I am innocent. Uh, I, I don't. I, I don't want to get involved anymore with this. You might remember that she did not ever talk again about the 17 proven lies that Megan said on that uh, interview it, and not forgetting the fact that Harry backtracked on the racist comments that they of course gave on that interview. And at the same time, uh, you know that Megan and Harry went and visited Oprah when Oprah was not there, but in Nashville, Tennessee, and it was for the last days of her father and Megan used Oprah's front door to make it seem like she was paying her friend a visit when Oprah was definitely not there. So Oprah must be really upset in many ways with Megan and Harry for, well, do, being these two grifters that only wanted her for the clout. Okay, they gave Gail King exclusive back then when Archie was born and then gave Oprah the exclusive, the sit down of uh, the two of them to talk about, to bash the royal family, but that's it. I don't think Oprah uh, believes that was worth it. Maybe, maybe it was uh, good money, of course. When she says they haven't asked me, I don't know. I don't think, I don't think the real attitude is that they haven't asked me. I don't believe that Harry and Meghan have reached out to Oprah. I don't, I don't think that Oprah is lying per se. Her body language, the way that she's trying to come out as friendly, She's trying to, she's forcing that friendliness, like shaking her head, uh, tells me that uh, she is not in very good terms with Harry and Meghan. Maybe she is not allowing them to contact her. And that's why, that's where her attitude comes from. That would be a much better explanation. And she shakes her head over and over again, keeping her fingers, look at her fingers. They, they are extremely tense, like 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 wrapping one the fingers over her right fist. And that you can uh, look at it right there. So there is a lot of tension, maybe a concealed anger. This is not easy for Oprah. She wants to distance herself from these people, but it, it has been asked so many times, and she was instrumental. Whether she likes it or not, she was instrumental in all this debacle. So that's not something that she's going to escape that easy. She made money. The Harkles made money. But was it worth it? But doesn't matter how much money the Harkles made. Because now we find out that they have money issues. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle bleeding money to maintain lavish lifestyle post-royal family split. Sources, this is in rather online, while Prince Harry and Meghan Markle appear to be unbothered by King Charles' decision to vacate their last remaining UK home, their friends believe the couple is far more upset than they are letting on, and their massive bills and shattered dreams of making it big in the US after leaving the royal family is causing trouble in their marriage. That will be not surprising. You know that Money troubles are always stressing on couples, especially if you have to maintain a 16 uh, bathroom mansion. That that is that will be heartbreaking. Harry is used to having the finer things in life. When Harry was a royal, he'd go on huge shopping sprees, glamorous vacations, and buy everyone drinks and dinner at expensive London restaurants. Recall one source: Charles funded everything, so Harry didn't have to think about money. And I think that is a big mistake for any man of this era. We have to uh, uh, show and teach 
our sons and, and daughters to value where money comes from, regardless of what is the privilege that we were born into, regardless what is the privilege that we have earned as parents, we have to show them. Maybe, maybe not make them struggle unnecessarily, but, but show them that struggles make you a better person, that uh, force your character and help you deal emotionally with harder things down the line. That's something that we have to teach our sons and daughters. The source said the pair had been holding out hope that Charles would come around and offer them financial assistance. <laughs> I hope not. We already are dealing with uh, Charles' decision to, well, let them have the titles for the children and did not, it did not sit well with a, a lot of royalists. I'm not going to say most royalists or have a percentage or a number because I don't, don't have it. But if you look on Twitter, you see that uh, that did not sit well. I'm, uh, I've suggested it will be much better if uh, Charles just made a blunt, direct decision, but it hasn't been, been made yet. But that will be, that will be the, the better way to act. They never imagined they would be totally cut off, the insider shared. Even before Charles closed his coffers, however, a source claimed Meghan was shocked at how little money Harry had. Yeah, Meghan, I think you you were wrong. You were wrong. Because the royal family is not about money. The royal family tries to raise money for charities. And that's why this was brought to my attention. This this Twitter accounts why the royals don't make any difference to charity, a thread. Even Evidence today publishes uh, research about royal patronage of uh, charities. And there was this, um, uh, it was from the Times. Having a member of the royal family as patron is perhaps the most sought after prize for a charity. But beyond lifting spirits and raising its headed note paper and website, a royal patron brings no discernible boost to a charity's income, as Tari has found. Well, I took the time to read this seven, the 70 pages uh, paper, Royal Patronages of UK Charities. What are they? Who gets them? And do they help to find out if these claims were actually in this uh, paper? If there was no direct relation between the patronages of the royal patronages and both being better in a better financial standing. And of course, you know that it was not true. And this is, this is the spoiler alert. That was not true. There was some issues in this, um, in this study. And I'm going to, uh, I said I was going to mention. And first, if, even the study finds a link between royal patronage and more money for charities, because it exists. They use a very small group of charities. The study looks at only 190 charities with royal patrons and 190 without. A larger number of charities would give a better idea of the real impact of having a royal patron. But now, the real trouble begins with an unfair comparison. The paper admits that not all charities are equally likely to get royal patrons. And this might mean that the results are more about the types of charities that attract royals than the actual effect of having a royal patron. There's also the problem of overlooking specific details. The study considers the size of the charities, but may not take into account other things that could affect a charity's success, success in financial terms such as the type of charity, where it's located, or other famous people supporting it. The media coverage is tricky to measure, and the paper uses media mentions to measure public awareness, which is not very precise, and it doesn't consider whether the media coverage is good or bad, or what we call the sentiment, which could, of course, affect the results. And last but not least, the study looks at data from 2008 to 2017, the influence of royal patrons on charities might have changed since then because of changes in how people see the royal family or the evolution and growing importance and impact of social media. A more recent study might have a, deep, a clearer picture of the current situation. So it's easy to find these accounts that want to use this kind of studies to claim there is no effect or impact of royal patronage in a charity's finances, but studies like this are too limited 
in school. And by the way, regarding of attacking the royal family, uh, this has been this uh, campaign from certain accounts that, uh, well, are not painting William and Catherine and Kensington Palace in uh, good light. And people are saying, why are all these attacks on William and Catherine? And at the same time, why, uh, why is there so much uh, resistance or so much criticizing Diana's legacy? I know she was not a saint, but she brought awareness to many things that were urgently needed at that moment. And I want to point out uh, a couple of tweets from Canel Citadel. Thanks, Canel. William was his mother's soulmate and her confidant. He knew her love life, her pain, her happiness, and her mental state better than anyone on this bird app does, including Harry. So if he says Diana would have been appalled by homelessness, was the charity that he was visiting, then he knows what he is talking about. And I will end with this uh, anecdote. In 1995, 13-year-old Prince William was in a fragile emotional place. He was adjusting to his new boarding school, Eton College, while also dealing with his parents' public split. Concerned for her grandson's emotional state, the queen invited him to join her after school. And surprisingly, this was the Duke of Edinburgh's idea as a way of nurturing their relationship. When the time came for the queen to talk business with William, Philip would quietly excuse himself because he didn't want to interfere with the constitutional side of the queen's job. That is from Robert Lacey's book. Thus... When Eton boys went home for the weekend, Prince William will join his grandmother at Windsor at his, as his school was across the river for, from Windsor. This became a weekly ritual that started the Queen's mentorship of Prince William as second in line to the throne. Again, I would like to know what is your opinion on all the topics of today. And remember that you can also have your choices and your requests of what kind of images would you like to watch next here and I will uh, tell the AI to generate them. My Roger Rogue is my name is Jesus Enrique Carroza. I'm the Roger Rogue. And until we meet in another video or another live, remember the two most important words much love and bliss.